segment is still known as Joe Franklin, that's me, remembers, but hi-ho, everybody, was the most popular opening catchphrase, opening slogan in the whole world of show business, about 1929 or 1930, that was the theme song, the recital, and the opening of the Rudy Valley radio show, Rudy Valley was the swooner crooner that took the world by storm, there was one big song called Crosby, Colombo, and Valley, everybody was singing Bing Crosby, Russ Columbo, Rudy Valley, but Valley was far and away number one. His record sold to the hundreds of millions all over the world. And Rudy Valley's radio show, sadly enough for me anyhow, was on opposite the Kate Smith radio show. Every Thursday night from 8 to 9 on network radio. No TV yet. Far far ahead was TV. From 8 to 9 was the Rudy Valley show opposite the Kate Smith show. And they both were gigantic. They were the two favorite entertainers in the world. And there was no reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders where you could tape one, listen to one, and the next day you had to try to go back and forth and try to catch them, which made it. But the protégés, who the, the ones that Rudy Valley mentored, that he more or less gave the first exposure, the ones he discovered included in those days, George Gershwin, the great composer, uh, Ethel Merman, Joe Penner, remember, When I Buy a Duck, Joe Penner, and uh, Victor Borger, and uh, even Eddie Cantor. They all got their first exposure on the Rudy Valley. The Rudy Valley show was enormously popular, and Rudy joined the, po the Coast Guard, and I guess he got a little feeling for the service uh, man of the world, because what ambition. Even though he was a popular singer, he wrote a famous book called Vagabond Dreams Come True. It was a great seller. He wanted to play General Patton in the movie. He kept bombarding Daryl Zanuck at 20th Century Fox. I want to play Patton, but naturally he never got the part. The part went to George C. Scott, but it's good conjecture how Rudy Valley might have done in that part. Rudy Valley... It was a little tapered down, but then you know, Preston Sturgis, the famous film director, uh, gave him many, many roles in Preston Sturgis movies where he played the arrogant, the, the ticklish, the millionaire with the, with the kind of cynical way of life. But he got his final gigantic break when he was signed up by Frank Lesser and Abe Burroughs to star with Bobby Morse in How Does It Seem to Not Really Try? How Does It Seem to Not Really Trying? was the number one hit on Broadway for at least three years in a row. To get a ticket for that show, you had to, had to know somebody really important. But Rudy Valley, his memory, the songs, he, 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 he once went to see a show called Roberta. The reviews were terrible. But he saw one song he liked in that show called Smoke It's In Your Eyes, and he sang it on his radio show about three, four weeks in a row. He made that show single handedly into a big hit. The show starred Bob Hope and Victor Moore and Tamara. But when Rudy Valley heard that one song, he asked me how I knew my true love was true. You must realize Smoke It's In Your Eyes. He sang it on the radio and it became a smash, made the show into the biggest hit the season, so I can only say that when it comes time to thinking back on the Swooter Crooners, the ones who, if he would sing one song on the radio, the next day the sheet music sales would go to 100,000. He had the great power. Today everything is so splintered, so segmentized. In those days, there was only one Rudy Valley. He alone could make any song into a smash, and the memories remain in my mind of my dear pal, Rudy Valley. Joe Frank, remembering for you. <laughs> Joe Franklin remembers. I'll be remembering with you, everybody. Jack Bendy, Eddie Cantor, Al Jolson, Rudy Valley, Kate Smith, Bob Hope. I mean, uh, Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney, the golden age of show business, Betty Davis, everybody. And they'll give you everything in the way of behind the scenes, behind the screens, uh, uh, what happened on stage, backstage, in various stages of their lives. It'll be most compelling, exciting, fascinating. I'm looking forward to doing it. And I'll be proving it with you. And for you and for your mommies and daddies, that everything old is new again. So be watching for me and Joe Franco remembers the memory lane as it was meant to be. The best of the past, the past is not past. They will be reminiscing, they're reminiscing all through these next uh, many, many years. Let's be in touch as we present. Listen to the reminiscing. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.